Inspiration hits you. You have an idea, something you want to do or a change you want to go through. You feel excited and can't wait to get started. You write things down and start researching around. You take your first step towards your goal and then reality checks in. The excitement is gone and just as always, you're never going to see a result. And the truth is that this will just keep happening again and again and again. You decide to eat healthy until you think about grabbing just a single candy and you know what happens next. Trying to stick to a regular bedtime routine for more than a week or actually launching a project you've obsessed about rather than quitting without even really trying. But why does that happen? And is there actually a way to change that or is it just how it's going to be? Well, there are so many people that have tried and succeeded doing all of those things. Just normal people with no particular talent or some extreme character that have the same weaknesses and shortcomings like me, you, and anyone else. Knowing this, I've decided to find the scientific explanation to see what makes the difference between someone who is successful and sticks to long-term commitments compared to someone who fails to do so and if it can be applicable to anyone. The answer is yes. And even though it's not as quick as breaking a goal into smaller daily tasks, it is actually simple. And today I'm going to share with you how exactly you can do it no matter how bad you have been at sticking to your long-term goal. But first, we need to understand how our brain works and why it's so easy to set a goal but so hard to achieve it. Why is it just not effortless instead? Elliot T. Berkman, who is a professor of psychology and a director of a neuroscience lab, writes in his paper The Neuroscience of Goals and Behavior Change that a goal is some desired outcome that would not happen by default without our own intervention. And that, in other words, is a detour from the path of least resistance. Basically, changing is hard because it's much easier just to do and stay the same. As human beings, our mind is designed to make us survive and reproduce. Those are our two core instincts. And we can think of the easiest way we can achieve these two things as the path of least resistance. That's why when I tried to eat healthy in the past, it would be so hard to choose a piece of broccoli over a cookie. A cookie is dense with sugar and calories and immediately relieves your hunger and gives you energy which used to be crucial when food was scarce. But I was able to make a conscious decision of choosing the broccoli over the cookie once. So what happened there? Did my mind malfunction by not choosing the path of least resistance? According to Charles Duhigg, who is the author of the book The Power of Habit, it's about moments when we have a spike of willpower when we sometimes feel inspired. And the reason that this is quite random is because our feelings, whether we feel inspired to be healthy and eat a salad or instead have ramen noodles and two Krispy Kreme donuts, change and fluctuate over time, day to day, even hour to hour. And four years later in 2016, it became known what Angela Duckworth found out and discovered on this, where in her research, she saw that people who stuck to long-term goals and transformations are not different than others by just having much more frequent spikes in willpower, but instead, they all had an internal source of inspiration that resulted in stable, unlimited willpower over long periods of time. Just a couple of years ago, I was the biggest eater of sweets. Whenever I would go out with my friends, I would always have dessert and I would always want more. I knew I was not being healthy and that it's not good, so I tried to become healthier many times, but never really did because the cookie was always tastier than the broccoli. Doesn't matter what strategy I use. But at one point when I saw my blood tests, how my results are becoming worse over time and where that is going to take me, I had a strong, deep sense of fear that I basically value eating a cookie every day over broccoli at the price of my health deteriorating over time to a point where I'm going to be unwell and depend on lots of medications. That realization that stuck with me was the single reason that made me quit sugar and processed foods. The days turned into weeks and years later, now it's just effortless. Duckworth called this grit. When you believe in and value something so much that inevitably you become passionate about it and then setbacks and challenges do not stop you and instead they are part of your journey towards your long-term goal. She saw this in effect in both students and professionals in a variety of different domains over the long term. And you can see that in many people that are extremely successful in what they do today. What they're believing in is much more powerful than how good a cookie tastes. Just like Thomas Edison said that it's not about some 
moments of inspiration that don't amount to anything long term, it's a deep sense of belief that makes you feel like you're getting a greed buff, while from the outside it looks like it's about some special characteristic of the person. This is the pattern that both earlier and more recent studies show as well. For example, Martin Seligman, a psychologist who is a pioneer in the field, adds to that idea as his research also suggests that the main differentiator between quitting after day four versus making a lifelong transformation is the strong belief that drives that behavior, regardless of what the long-term goal is. In college, I had a classmate that I secretly really envied because she seemed to be able to study so much every day and she was doing so great because of that. When I studied with her, she was able to just focus every time while I would be distracted in so many ways that I barely got something done. After graduating, I started seeing how some people seemed to be able to persist with doing something until they succeed, just like her, for so long in spite of the discomfort and their limited willpower. Well, now we know that they all share one thing in common. They're all driven by a strong internal belief. But while everyone can be like that, what if you just don't have a strong belief? I had a long-term goal, but it doesn't usually come from a life-changing realization. It's just because I think it's the right thing to do or I just want it. It's not a profound idea that will make me pursue it every day as if a lion is chasing me. Nicholas Ziegler and Michaela Schippers, Dutch psychologists, answer this in a long paper that talks about how most live by heteronormous goals, which is a fancy way to say goals that are considered good by society, like being a lawyer, for example. While some like Arnold Schwarzenegger live by self-endorsed goals they deeply believe in. And it's very evident in his three-episode documentary. You can hear him talk about it passionately and really get his feeling. Living like that gives people like Arnold Schwarzenegger self-determination, fulfillment, and purpose. Based on Ziegler and Schipper's work, we need to ask ourselves a set of questions to find it in ourselves. Jordan Peterson, who you most likely know and heard of, really doubled downs on this and guides us to make it even easier in his self-authoring program. One day before I ever knew about this during college, I was talking with a friend of mine, his name is Chris, who I met in a class I took in philosophy, unrelated to my major in computer science, but I had to choose a few. We randomly started talking about very successful people and how they seem to persevere through challenges over a long period of time. He told me about his uncle who served in the Navy SEALs and that he taught him to write about his most ambitious goal and deeply write about the journey that he needs to go through to achieve that goal and why that journey matters. The same day, I started writing on blank A4 sheets of paper everything in my mind, what I want, why I want it, and really take my time and go deep. Back then, it was right after COVID happened and it was really hard to get internships. So I remember a portion was dedicated for securing a good internship, which I did, and diving deep into what it meant, making it crystal clear more than just a high salary, felt like getting an adrenaline shot that pushed me to be as resourceful as I humanly could to get an internship. Today, with having a day job, this personal process is what took me from always telling myself I will do what I said tomorrow because now I'm tired, to jumping on my laptop and consistently putting in the hours. Now, if you looked at this from the outside, it would have seemed that this is just who I am, that I was always like this, but no, no, no. I was as capable of binge watching TV shows and scrolling endlessly on the phone, anything to avoid what I told myself I would do. And this went on for months, years. The only thing that actually made a difference was really clarifying why I want to achieve something I was inspired by. Self-authoring and going after my own self-endorsed goals. I also found this to be a natural way to understand why growth mindset actually works. Because once you start, you don't stop putting in the effort, whether it's your health, financial or life goals, you don't stop learning, becoming better, gaining experience, progress starts becoming tangible and results slowly come in. And then your mindset adjusts. You realize that anyone and everyone is capable of dramatically changing. Now, sometimes things are going to be difficult. It might be a stressful time at work, 
your favorite sports or esports team lost in some tournament, or it's just a gloomy day and it makes you feel like shit. Any of those will not cause you to reset. It's like if you came home one time and went straight to bed without brushing your teeth, you'll be back to brushing your teeth the next day, no big deal. You're going to have bad days or bad weeks, and sometimes it won't be even in your control. But it's better than the other way around when the default is barely doing okay, and you just happen to have a good day once in a while. If anything, write down in journal to help yourself keep up on those days or when you feel it's just a long period where things are just a bit harder because of whatever reason. For a very long time, I believe that it's just a personality trait one is born with, something you can't really control, and I really struggled because of that. It took a lot of research and trying that for myself that made me realize how wrong I was. Reading gets a lot of credit, and reading is great, don't get me wrong, but we should give more attention towards not only consuming other people's thoughts and beliefs, but listening, exploring, and writing about our own, especially with all the research that shows the same patterns beneath the long-term success stories that we never actually see, and instead attribute it to something inherent in the successful person. And with that said, thank you so much for watching, have a great rest of your day, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.